If you like detective stories, then microbiology is for you. In this interview, Dr. Gagandeep Kang, one of India's leading public health experts and microbiologists, explains her specialization and discusses her own experience of pursuing it and shares valuable life lessons that every student needs to hear. In part one of this interview, Dr. Kang spoke about what could have been done to prevent the COVID-19 pandemic, so click on the link in the description for that. Let's get started. My first question is, how would you explain your own specialization in microbiology to a 12 or 13 year old student? So it's a bit like detective stories. You have to figure out what the problem is and then figure out how you can answer it. So most of microbiology tends to be investigations in infectious disease. Okay. So you want to try and figure out, you know, what is causing an illness. Once you figure that out, then the other questions come along. How big a problem is it? What can we do about it? You know, what's the best way of doing something? So it's really very simple principles, but the techniques that we use can sound high end. They're not when you really boil it down to what is the question that you're asking about this. Okay. What are some of the newer jobs or possible careers in the future of biomedical research? Perhaps jobs we don't hear about as frequently today? I think one of the things that we have to understand is that data science and biomedical data science is going to be very important. If we look at all the tools that are becoming available to us now, we have the ability to collect and analyze and interpret data in ways that we've never had before. So for example, if you take um, Google's DeepMind, the fact that you can take a sequence and it will predict a protein structure for you, that could potentially be a game changer for people who study both physiology as well as pathophysiology, you know, health and disease. Mm -hmm. So if you can, it's not the answer to everything, but it's a great starting point because these are not the kinds of tools that were so readily available a couple of years ago. Now, with this, it allows us to accelerate our work. Now, that's one example. But if you take a look at public health data and the ability to collect data and detect signals when something is going wrong and get in there early, we haven't had that before. But the important thing to remember about all of data sciences is that all of this needs to be generated and done at a very high quality, very rigorous level, because otherwise it's garbage, garbage out. So there is huge opportunities in the future, but the important thing that we will have to remember is that quality in everything that we do is going to be critical. Okay. Why should a student choose to pursue microbiology? Because it's fun. Okay. Well, that's fair. Yeah. So think, look at bugs. There are so many of them. They're so pretty. And mm -hmm. they behave in so many different ways. Yeah. Some of them are fabulous. They do good things for us and for our ecosystem. Some of them are dangerous. So it doesn't matter what your interests are in you will always find an aspect of microbiology that will be absolutely fascinating. Okay, great answer. Um, what was your own experience of pursuing microbiology like? Um, so I like the subject a lot because as I said, in many ways, microbiology is all about detective stories. There was a book written in the 1920s by Paul de Proof called Microbe Hunters. And it told the stories of all the great microbiologists until 1930. Mm. And I used to read and reread that book because it was just so much fun figuring out 
you know, so what did Robert Koch do? What did Louis Pasteur do? All these little human stories about people who were advancing the science. And then there were some, I came across a secondhand book called Medical Detectives, which was apparently based on a US show, which told little stories of how people figured out mostly infectious diseases. You know, you have a mystery patient and then you figure out what's wrong with the mystery patient. So I don't know if your colleagues have watched House and uh -huh. I believe yeah. there are other similar shows now, but ultimately trying to put all the pieces together to make a story, to provide an explanation and think about what would be an appropriate management course for that. Can't imagine anything being more fun. Okay. Is there anything you would have done differently if you had the chance? Um, I think for me, one of the things that I think I would have liked to do differently is I would have liked to believe in my own abilities a little more at a younger age. Okay. So um, in the time that I was growing up uh, in school and in college and then after college, uh, Indian society has this construct or had this construct in the 70s, 80s, 90s, which was essentially around the role of women and what they needed to do. So, for example, in my medical school class, there were a couple of women who did predominantly surgical fields, and both of them wound up leaving those fields. Okay. And many of the women then chose fields that were considered more traditionally appropriate for women. They've all done brilliantly. They're all fabulous people that have been achievers in their own field. But I think if we had had a, the kind of world that we have today, then we would have stepped up more, taken on a different kind of challenge from the ones that we did. For me personally, it took till I was about 40 to learn to even begin to speak up for myself. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it was always, you know, who am I to be stepping into this space? Now I know that I need to take up space because I have something to contribute. Okay. That's, that's very great to know, ma'am. Um, what would be the three most important pieces of advice you'd like to tell me or any other student who's interested in science? Well, the first one is the lesson that took me decades to learn which is really believe in yourself and your abilities. And the other one is that you need to figure out what you have fun with and then make that into part of your working life. And that way you will continue to enjoy what you're doing. For me, when people begin to talk about retirement, I'm thinking I'm not ready for this yet. Okay. And I hope I won't be for quite a while. So first, believe in yourself. Second, have fun. And the third one is recognize that failure is actually a good thing. Because if you haven't failed, then quite frankly, you weren't ambitious enough. And an example of that is when people set out to do research projects, they pick the easy or the safe ones where the answer is predictable so that they won't have to say, I tried and I failed. Mm -hmm. But I think if you're not failing enough, then you're not really learning enough. You're not really growing enough. So you need to challenge yourself. Okay. Um, what, what inspired you to take up science in the first place? I don't think I needed an inspiration. So um, in school, I enjoyed history, geography very much. And I enjoyed science a little bit less, but I was good at it. And there is a construct that, you know, if you're 
interested in science and doing reasonably well, you go down that route. And for me, I talked about it with my father and um, you know, we thought, okay, maybe not mathematics, so physics or biology. And uh, for biology, it just made sense to do medicine. I also had role models uh, in the family that were doctors. And somehow the idea of research didn't come up at the time that I was choosing a career. I, that evolved with time. But looking back now, I realized that what I was doing uh, when I was growing up was setting me up for a research career. So, you know, talking with my parents, uh, the kinds of holidays we did, the kinds of projects that we did before projects were a thing in schools. Uh, because I was moving schools a lot, I had to spend my summers doing a lot of catching up. And most of that catching up I did as different kinds of projects that allowed me to learn things. So a little bit unusual in that day and age, but a good setup for where I am now. Hmm. Okay. Why do you think, I mean, your experience that you hadn't started off thinking that you would end up in research, I feel like that's common amongst a lot of students who start off liking science in the, in the beginning. Why do you think that is the case? Why do people not look at research as the first option? Because we are not shown that research is an option. So in whether it is in medicine or in biological fields, even if you wind up doing a dissertation for your master's degree, it really is something that is given to you top down. It's not about you having the ability to explore your own ideas or formulate your own questions. The biggest thing about our educational system is that even though we talk about higher order thinking skills, everything has become a formula now. So it's not about giving you the space for exploration and the space for framing questions in a way that you can look at how they could potentially be addressed. I wish there was a lot more learning that resulted in uh, skill building uh, rather than in gathering facts. Nowadays, we are in a world where facts are available to you on your phone. Yeah. But the ability to think and the ability to question and the ability to design your own experiments, that's what you need at this time if you want to go into a research career. Okay. Quoting you from an earlier interview, when asked what is next for you, you reply that you were going to multiply the number of young people in science. Now, that is something that I found really, really interesting. Could you tell me a little more about what you mean when you said that? When I speak to people um, in medicine and in public health, a lot of people say, how did you get to where you are? Like that is something unusual. It should not be unusual. It should be one of the many options that people have to be able to move the field of medical science forward by taking on big questions and failing and failing and failing and occasionally something working out. So why are more people not doing that? So my goal really in working with all the people that I work with now is challenging them to be more ambitious and equipping them with the skills to be able to design studies that answer these big questions. And so far, I'm really proud of some of the young people who have worked with me. It's actually such a joy when you have students who are better than you. So I have a few examples of that where I will call up my students and say, can you help me with this? 
and they have an expertise that they have acquired that I cannot hope to achieve. But that's how it should be. Okay, that's that's really good to hear. This is Science Teens, where we meet experts and ask questions that can help you make the right study and career decisions in the sciences. I do this as a fellow student, and your support through a like and subscription will give me and everyone contributing to this channel a lot of encouragement.